Quebec, Canada, fighting Troy the Destroyer Dorsey. 12 rounds for the World Super Lightweight Championship. What are you going to do now as far as kickboxing? First, I want to thank God. Say hello to my wife, Shelly and Kendra. Happy birthday, Shane. And thank all of my instructors and students at my school now. Pick up kickboxing and boxing both again and go out there world time. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. Destroyers to If the Gloves Could Talk. I can't believe it. We are here. It is episode 10. Troy, can you believe we're already 10 episodes into this series? No, I can't. It's past uh, time flies. We're having fun. Exactly. So episode 10 here. We're going to do things a little bit different. No interview lined up for today and no blast from the past segment either. So I've got a fun segment plan with Troy and I want you guys to get to know us a little bit better. Of course, you know a lot about Troy and his career and his fighting. You're probably wondering how I got involved in this. Bryce is the wonderful woman that, that, that uh, what do you call it? You, you produce. Have, every week, you're the, my producer. And every I'm his week. producer. I'm his agent. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, so uh, she does a good job and work hard. So Thank yes, you, Troy. Yes, ma'am. Let's get going. All righty. Okay, so for every, so I'm going to pull out a question, then you pull out a question. But for each one we pull out, so we'll, we'll walk through the first one together. Is that Splenda? I thought that was Splenda. <laughs> <laughs> no Splenda in this. <laughs> just, just little post-it notes. So. So I opened it, I'm gonna read the question, I'm gonna answer it, and then you answer it, okay? Okay. But this one may only require me to answer it, so this one asks, how did the two of you meet? So I met Troy through Rick Larkin, who's the owner of 063 Studios, and he introduced me to Troy because he bought this building from Troy. So a lot of you guys know, some of you don't know, this used to be Troy's old karate school, so that's how I met you. Yes. Is that how you remember it? And uh, yes, I saw you coming in and took over. And <laughs> <laughs> yep, here we are. <laughs> here we go, here we are, yes. Okay, you pull one out. So you have to get it going with our yes. uh, with our, our guests and things like that. Exactly. And so, yeah, all, all that came from you. Uh, what's one childhood memory that you still remember to this day? Huh. I remember bringing my brother home from the hospital when he was born. Yeah. Here, here at Cedars Hospital in Mansfield, which uh, is across from the, what do they call it, the government buildings now mm -hmm. with the big flag. Yeah, that's on, on Broad. That's where he was born. That's where my middle brother Brian was born, and, and that's where I was born too. November 19, 1962. So that, that's, uh, that's my earliest memory. I specifically remember my uh, parents would take me to the Fort Worth Zoo, and on this day, my dad took me, and it was when I was young enough, I was still like carrying around some type of stuffed animal, oh, yeah. and it was only about like this size, but it was a purple platypus, and oh, I yeah. loved that thing. It was just so soft, and I took it everywhere. Well, of course, I left it somewhere uh, in the zoo, and a couple I- of years ago. Yeah, just oh, yeah. a couple years ago. And I was so upset. I remember, like, the world ended, and uh, I still remember that. I still remember that purple platypus. That it was, was it a duck billed platypus? It was like that, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was okay. purple, so. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's a neat little animal. Well, that was question number two. So I'm going to dive into question three. I'm just going to dig in here and see what we find. Okay. Have you had your wisdom teeth or tonsils removed? So I have not had my tonsils removed. I've had all four wisdom teeth removed when I was 19. Um, painful. I didn't have any like major complications or anything like that, but uh, it was uncomfortable having all four of them removed at once. Mm. Have you had? That was tough. 
Both my brothers had theirs removed, but me, I still got my tonsils. What about your wisdom teeth? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let them go. <laughs> and my wisdom teeth, I was, as you were saying that, I was trying to think. Oh. He's like having to feel back there. <laughs> yeah, I still have my wisdom teeth. Yeah. They came in, they came in straight, and they're good so far. So I've been real fortunate dentist-wise, dentist wise, I guess. Right. I have, I've had one cavity. And it turned into a root canal, and that's all. I've had no cavities. It's something I'm very proud about. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> no cavities. But, okay, question for Troy. Yeah, I thank the Pick Lord the for that. One. I'm so I'm very thankful. My mm-hmm. wife, my poor wife has all kinds of situations really? she has to deal with. Oh. Uh, and I know it's painful. It's, uh, right. What is your favorite color? Hmm. That's a difficult, that's a hard one for me. <laughs> this is the one that really stumps Troy. <laughs> Was my, it was my my favorite color. Uh, I guess I'd say brown. And, okay. And there's really no reason why. I can't say why. I just uh, think uh, brown. I love uh, royal blue. Oh yeah. Like that darker blue, but it's still bright. I just think it's. I just think it's a really beautiful color. Okay. Question five. What is your favorite kind of animal? Um, I could do something really creative, but honestly, it's cats. I'm a cat mother. I'm oh, very yeah. proud about that. Um, that's my first born is my cat. So. <laughs> cats first would be my favorite animal. Yeah. What about you? Well, my favorite animal. Uh, I love I love an, all kind of animals. Um, the dogs that I had when I was growing up, I love them, and I love horses. Mm-hmm. And so it's really hard for me to check. To pick, not to chick, but but to pick one uh, one animal. I guess it would probably be the man's best friend, mm-hmm. dog. You can't yeah. go wrong with that choice. Yeah, I, I, I love the dog that we had before, and the like dogs that I've had uh, after I left my parents' house. But yeah, there was a dog, a, a Boston Terrier, and we bought him from a lady here in Mansfield. I believe her some of her relatives are still alive. I know they are. And I can't remember the name, but uh, yeah, pet dog. I love it. Okay, next question. Okay, let me get dig through these uh, sugar packages. <laughs> oh, they're childproof, huh? I know. What have you learned about yourself and each other throughout this podcast? Well. Um, I'm, I've learned that <laughs> this doesn't really make sense, but I th- I've learned that I'm remembering more than what I thought I remembered, what I thought I would have remembered. So it just takes some time and thought. That's it, I believe. But uh, yeah, just a good what I, what I've learned. I guess it's just rem- reminded me of uh, all the good times that I had when I was fighting and traveling to Europe and Mexico and Canada and all across America. I just can't believe that I got to do that. So that's. Uh, that's, that's been a great thing and been great reminders, and I, I'm just so fortunate that my wife stuck with me all the time when I was gone. So some, some husbands aren't there and they're gone, and that, it doesn't turn out very good, but so far, so good for me, and I'm just so, so uh, blessed that Leslie stuck with me. For the last, in September, will be 38 years. 38 years. Yeah. We're going to need to do an episode special. Maybe yeah. then we can get Leslie on the okay, show. Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's what we need to do. Okay, let me see the question because I need to answer it and I can't totally remember what I asked. <laughs> okay. So what have you learned about yourself and each other throughout this podcast? I guess I, I didn't say anything about you, did I? No. So, so about you, uh, Bryce, you've just been so uh, creative and so working hard and it just what you've done to, to, to make this podcast do what it's doing is uh, you've done such you've done a really good really good job of, of making it trying to make it work and and uh, supporting me just hands down you've been you've done it a lot thank, thank you. you well what I've learned through this podcast is just how honestly incredible you are and you know the impact you've made in the sport and it's really cool that I get to kind of you know 
get to sit back seat in this and you know I just get a perspective that so many people back seat would be back here <laughs> I get to She's sit right. front seat passenger seat so yeah. VIP seat right yes there. but I get to have a perspective a lot of people would love to have and so I'm really appreciative of that and um what I've learned about myself is that I am capable of getting in front of a camera you know co-hosting you know, you know the number one fear in the country is public speaking Public speaking. Here you are, and public speaking like a pro. Thank you. And it translated when I was still in college, even though we didn't start this podcast, you know, live broadcasting when I was still in school. But um, I have a lot more confidence, you know, speaking in front of people. So that's one thing I've learned about myself. So, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Next question. What is your favorite attribute about your co-host? So I'll say my favorite attribute about you, Troy, is your kindness. I've never met somebody who just, um, you always see the good in someone and you're always very forgiving. And I think all of us can take something from that and learn from that. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So. Thank you. Okay, what's the question again? What is your favorite attribute about your co-host? Uh, as I said a while ago, just just getting on, getting uh, getting down to the, the dirty the dirty work, and just taking care of it, and, and not you know you could have just kept doing what we were doing, just interviewing me, and uh, but now we've got guests, and we've had people on there, several people, great people, and uh, you've been working really hard to. So the time that I'm behind the camera uh, or on podcast is 45 minutes or to an hour so I'm not sure how many hours you work just for that right that that's amazing that you've done all that and all it took and put all your time and effort into making this try to work and um, I thank you very much for that well thank you we were yeah. talking the other day me and the girls I work with and I, we were putting something up and we had thought for months what did we want to call it because we didn't want to call it Troy Dorsey we didn't call it like you know, 12 rounds with Troy. I don't know. It just had to be something more creative. And it just finally came to me. And I was like, if the gloves could talk. Okay. And I, it just made sense, you know, um, just with all the stories and, you know, all of the, the things we retell about Troy's life. It's like, what if the gloves could talk? Yeah, you know? that, was, that was great. Yeah. So That's here great. we are. I if the gloves never, could talk. Yeah, I never would have thought of it. I never would have thought of that. I don't believe so. Yeah, thank you for... Again, putting your putting your twist on it. Right. <laughs> that's, that's what you do. That's your twist. The podcast. Thank you. Oh wow! Wow! So many memories here. I'm on to a new place now. This is really unbelievable. So when we when we opened up, we had our martial arts classes over here, and we had our kickboxing classes over here. But this, this is a great memory. So many memories you made here, so many black belts, about 400 black belts during 1999 to 2022. I'm just now getting it. Believe it or not, I've been in business for 41 years and uh, with two karate schools, and I'm just not getting where I'm being able to get home a little, little earlier. Let's see here. What was your favorite subject in school? Okay. My favorite subject in school was PE. <laughs> <laughs> that was not mine. No. I was always the last person picked to like be on the basketball team or something like that, so I wasn't the most coordinated. Um, you were the most coordinated? I wasn't. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, so that didn't help. Um, I mean, even though it's not really like English or science, I loved, I always loved music. I always loved art class. That was really, I used to be an art major once in a lifetime ago. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So my favorite subject, I guess, was I, I kind of enjoyed history. Yeah. Learning what happened back in uh, creating America and, Texas, Texas history is very interesting. Yeah, I will is. say I did enjoy Texas history. 
So. I wish I knew more more about it, but I remember in school that was my that was my favorite, favorite Chevy. Mm -hmm. Chevy. I mean, I could say PE, but that's not really. I know. A <laughs> So, yeah, we talked about learning. Uh, there's a lot to learn about our country, only 200 years old, right? Uh, so, yeah. It's crazy. It is. Okay, I'll ask the next question. What was your first car you drove? So, for me, it was a 2009 Mini Cooper. The transmission finally gave out, but I probably got, that's probably going to be the car I get the most compliments on ever because it was just so cute to drive, oh, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. What was your first car? My first car was a 67 six-cylinder Mustang. 67 Mustang. What it, color was it? It was blue. Oh. It was blue. What color was your car? It was cherry red. Cherry red, ah. That's exactly what they called it, so I love it. There's pictures somewhere. I'll find it of the car, but... I was really proud to have that. That's my first car. So. Two door or four door? It was two door. Two door. I was really lucky to have, yeah. you know, a car, period. So, yeah. I love that thing. Yeah, my my 67 Mustang blue, two door, four cylinder. Oh, wow. But it had some kind of pipes on it. I'm not yeah. sure what, but it, so it sounded, it sounded noisy, it sounded loud. Yeah. And it was a three speed. And, well, I thought it was something else when I got that. Got <laughs> I thought I was so cool just to have a car, you know. And yeah. Yeah, you just think you're like, I could have been way safer when I was driving then, but you do live and you learn. Yeah. So. We paid a lot of money for that Mustang, and I bought it from Kenny Williams, who has a paint, uh, automa automo automobile paint uh -huh. um, place here in here in Mansfield, off of New Patterson Road, mm -hmm. where by where we're similar, or close where we uh, yeah. lived, and where I was raised most of my life, and uh, I paid four hundred and fifty dollars for it. Wow! Which was really nothing back. I mean, yeah, it, it was a little bit for me for sure, but that was my first car, four hundred fifty dollar. I wish I still had it. Yeah, that thing probably worth twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. Yeah, now. or yeah. if you refurbished it, even oh, yeah. even oh, more. Yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, what's your next question, Troy? Next question is, what were you scared of growing up? I was just scared of the dark. I'm still a little scared of the dark. I'm not going to lie. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I had a hard time at night sleeping. I had horrible mm -hmm. dreams. And I still have some of those horrible dreams. But uh, crazy, horrible dreams. But the enemy's on the attack. So we was praying those things off of me. But when I was a kid, no, no, I wasn't a kid. I was, I was about 17 or 18 years old, and I was spending the night with my friend and his brother-in-law in Brownwood. We were hunting ducks and deer. So I'm laying in the, in the fold-out couch, mm -hmm. uh, made it folded into a bed. Then here they are, and then at the end of the hall, no, here I am, and at the end of the hall is the bedroom. And they slept in that bedroom there in the bed. Oh, wow. two, two of those men in the bed, no big deal. Yeah. It was uh, one of my friends. He's in a, in a business that you can't be, can't, I can't be saying his name. Anyways, I had a, a dream. And I woke up and I screamed, Wah! running down the hallway. Were you sleepwalking? I think I was sleep running. Yeah, not <laughs> sleepwalking. <laughs> and I jumped on their bed. And by the time I got there, they were already their back against the wall, and I jumped in the bottom, in the bottom of their bed there, and they were had their backs against the wall. And then he slipped on, he switched, it, turned the light on, and said, "What is going?" <sighs> Nothing. Oh had a dream. Gosh. So well, I was sleep running. Yeah. I guess. Uh, yeah, I had, had horrible nightmares, and I ran all the way down that hallway. They said they could hear me hitting the side, and I went out. Grabbed my, scraped my foot real bad on the carpet, like the top of it somehow. I don't know how to do it. Do you have those kind of dreams anymore? Uh, I still have bad dreams, but I haven't, I haven't gotten Not like out of, that. I haven't gotten out of bed yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time I got out of bed. I started running and screaming and hollering. Yeah, I used to definitely be afraid of the dark. Still am a little bit sometimes, but you know, grow out of that. But okay. What meal would you want to eat if it was your last meal on earth? Um, for me, 
probably would have to be a filet mignon cooked medium rare. Um, probably mac and cheese with like the Brussels sprouts that like have a sweetness to it from the sauce that they're in. Oh, yeah. And then for my, oh, there'd have to be bread, of course. Yeah. And then for my dessert, oh, probably like a, a warm brownie, like really warm with ice cream on top of it. That'd probably be it for me. Oh, yeah. What would your last meal be? Uh, maybe a Big Mac. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound... No, That'd be I'm, good. I'm joking. Big Mac is not. I don't. I don't eat those. I don't eat. Yeah. That kind of uh, food usually. Matter of fact, my wife and I. Well, uh, I won't say that. I won't talk about that. But uh, uh, we traveled this weekend, and we, and we both got a small one of those junior burgers, mm-hmm. and uh, it was it was it wasn't good. Yeah. Well, it wasn't at McDonald's. It was it was Wendy's, but it was okay. Okay, okay it was real small. So uh, I guess if I got to pick my last meal, I'd like a ribeye steak, medium well, uh, a big baked potato, loaded, loaded, and then loaded some more, <laughs> and um, green beans, and of course bread. Like and what said. about your dessert? And for dessert, ice cream uh, on a brownie. Mm-hmm. That's it. So if the skin is salted on the baked potato. What do you eat the skin? Oh, I eat the skin usually. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'll eat the skin too, but when it's salted, like the sea salt on the outside, oh, yeah. that's when it's really, really good. It is. I love that. They know how to suck you in there. I know. <laughs> but we've got quite a few questions left, Troy. I think we're gonna have to save this for a part two for next week's episode. Have you enjoyed this? Oh, yes. Yeah? Yeah, bring it up. I have too. It's been a little bit different, you yes, know? Yes. So we've... And again, a great idea. Yeah, right. so we've got some fun guests lined up. I'm not going to share yet, but um, one of Troy's past uh, fighters, or I guess you would say one of Troy's past opponents is going to be on the show here coming up in the next couple of episodes. Um, so lots of, lots of fun content we have planned ahead. Is there anything you want to share with our guests before we sign out today? Yes, yeah, so we're not going to tell you the name of the uh, of the fighter, but but his uh, he was a boxer, mm-hmm. so a, a great world champion and a boxer. Yeah. So you just wait; it's going to be a good one. He likes to talk, which is exactly <laughs> who we need to have on yeah. if the gloves could talk. But yes. I'm your host, Bryce George, and as always, I have Troy Dorsey here with me, and we'll see you next time on If the Gloves Could Talk. Thank you all for joining us. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.